Hello there, old boy. How are you doing today? Excellent. Do you know who Rystar is? You don't? Well, let me tell you all about it. How's it going everyone, and welcome back for my second review, Rystar. Ristar to some, or commonly known as Ristar the Shooting Star in Japan. Now, I know a lot of you may be thinking, Outlaw, how did you go from this, to this? Well, there is a short story behind why I chose this game as my next review, so just hear me out for a sec. Okay, bye. Back in the year 1998, when I was a wee lad, I would talk to some of my friends about the good games that I had in my game library. I stated that I was having great fun playing Earthworm Jim 2 for the PC, but I wanted to try another one, you know, to mix things up a bit. Then one of my friends told me that he had a platforming game, so great on his Sega Mega Drive that I would end up going out to buy it, just to play that single game. Of course I thought he was making it up, but he invited me to his house, and you know, it was an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> See what I did there? Uh, yeah, moving on. So a few days later, I went round to his house to play it, and he bragged on and on about his console collection. <laughs> show off. After he booted up the Mega Drive, I was quite impressed by the intro. It made the game seem dark, and it even creeped me out a bit with its gloomy music. Then the next thing I know, a giant star with a face popped up on the screen, bobbing his head and all. After starting up the first level, I was amazed. The colours! <laughs> the music! <laughs> Truly amazing. I could grab, 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 and swing. It was great, and I instantly fell in love with it. Swinging around the handles at lightning speed, it was something I had never seen before. Then I got to the end of the stage, and the game crashed. Yeah, it just stopped, buzzing and all. My friend told me that nothing like that had ever happened before, and it was probably just a bit of dust in the cartridge. So after dusting it off and beating the first level again, the game froze again. He started telling me that I had broke the game. <laughs> yeah, because touching the gamepad really destroys the game. But I said to him, well, maybe it was the blast processing. He never spoke to me again since. But after the whole ordeal was over, I was quite fascinated with console gaming, which started with me begging my parents for a PS1. Ah, the good old PS1. Who needs friends when you've got a PS1, right? Right? Although it wasn't until a few years later in 2002 that I finally got to play Rystar as a hidden unlockable in the Sonic Mega Collection game for the Nintendo GameCube, which was unlocked by playing all of the main games 30 times, and I can say that I was just as amazed as I was back in 1998. Published by Sega and produced by Sonic Team, you know, those guys who made Sonic, y you might have heard of him. Rystar was released in February of 1995 to many positive reviews, being highly praised for its great controls, colourful surroundings and strong soundtrack, much like the previously released Sonic trilogy, but also some negativity for borrowing minor gameplay elements from other games in the genre including Sonic, but still the positives massively outweighed the negatives. Rystar's design process was a funny one, since he was largely based off of the original idea Sonic Team had proposed for Sonic the Hedgehog, a rabbit-like creature that was able to extend its ears to reach objects far away, but was ultimately scrapped. You know, like when you finish your dinner, but you don't want to throw it away, no, you gotta give it to your dog. That's right, and that puppy's name was Rystar. Head of Sonic Team Yuji Naka quoted, As the game got faster and faster, we needed to come up with a special characteristic to give our character, some power over his enemies. I remembered a character I'd thought about years ago who could roll himself into a ball and slam into enemies. Hedgehogs can roll themselves into a ball, so we decided to go from a rabbit to a hedgehog. And so Dexter... Huh? What do you mean he's not called Dexter? <clears throat> and so Rise Star the Shooting Star was born. Well, Dexter was actually one of the early names proposed for Western audiences. Thank God they didn't catch on. The story of Rise Star is shown in a short but effective opening cinematic complete with eerie music explaining that the Valdi system has come under attack by the evil Kaiser known as Greedy, who is using mind control to enslave the world's leaders and even manages to capture the great hero, Rystar's father. With all hope lost, the last elder that is resisting mind control manages to send off a distress signal through space, reaching Rystar by chance and triggering the start of his epic journey. So yeah, not the strongest story, but hey, it was 1995 and stories didn't really get all that complex. Funnily enough, the intro story was a bit different from the Japanese version, with Rystar's father not even being mentioned, and instead Rystar was summoned by a star goddess. This is just one of the few changes that were made for the western audiences, but I'll get to that later. 
The controls are very simple to get into, with the D-pad used to move Rice Star, the A button to jump and gain higher ground, the B button to grab, allowing you to latch onto the many ladders amongst other things, the C button to jump, um, okay yeah, well that's it really. Well to be honest that was all that was really needed. The gameplay, while not as fast as other games in this genre, such as Sonic, had a greater emphasis on platforming, while still being well paced. You could climb ladders, scale walls, swing on handles and interact with objects in the environment in different ways. Rystar's main method of attack is his grab move which allows him to stretch his arms, grabbing enemies from a distance, you know like stars do, and headbutting them when the B button is released for a deadly attack that carries most enemies in one hit. Oh my god is he... he's strangling them? Uh, oh wait 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 no next, fine by me. Throughout the game, Rystar will travel from planet to planet with a very impressive cutscene to boot, with the next world vastly differing from the last. These include a forest, a water world and a musical planet just to name a few, and the visuals don't fail to impress. The music is also well composed by Tomoko Sasaki, with a few tunes that will stick in your head for years to come. There are a few pickups scattered around the levels, such as Little Stars which give you an extra life, Yellow Jewels which give you extra points, Restore Stars which give you one extra hit point, and Blue Restore Stars which completely replenishes all of your hit points. Wait, is that cannibalism? Well, it doesn't actually show him eating them, so I guess it's fine. Now, I've always wondered, where do all of those stars go? I mean, does he have some sort of back pocket? Does he attach it to himself? Hmm, maybe he stores it in his mouth. Hmm. There is also a hidden bonus stage in each level, which require a bit of exploration to find. And while they aren't usually too difficult, can get challenging if you aren't comfortable with the controls, since there is a time limit. If you manage to beat the bonus stage, you will be awarded with a treasure, which won't help during gameplay, but will provide something for you at the end of the game if you collect enough of them. At the end of the two stages on each world, there will be a third that consists of a boss fight, pitting you against one of the many enemies he has to face to free the planet of Greedy's mind control. Each boss battle will usually require you to use a different method of defeating them, resulting in some creative scenarios such as the ice monster where you have to throw hot food into his mouth to melt him, amongst others. While I do like this game a lot, I feel there are a few negatives such as the lack of a save feature, meaning that you will have to complete it in one sitting, although a save feature is added in later versions such as the Mega Drive Ultimate Collection for Xbox 360 and PS3, and also the difficulty. Now, this game may not be too much of a challenge for seasoned gamers, but newcomers may have a bit of trouble, especially on the later levels. Although, if you are finding it too easy, the harder modes unlocked com upon completing the game will certainly provide a challenge, as the toughest mode will start you off with only one hit point and no lives, resulting in an instant game over if hit once. And so the critics finally were on. Wait, wait, what's that? I don't remember that tale. Now, that was my first reaction to seeing it when I was younger but I just wrote it off as some beta concept art late left in by mistake. I guess you could say I was half right. Remember before when I was talking about some changes between the Japanese and Western versions of the game? Well, after doing a bit of research, it turns out that the, this boss looked quite different in the Japanese version and was actually a cat type monster. Uh, what? Well, the Japanese have a saying known as Nekojita, which can be used to refer to people with tongues sensitive to hot liquids, but more specifically indicates cats have sensitive tongues. This would make sense, since the theme of the boss is to throw a hot bowl of the uh, tingy majiggy into its mouth, but it would have been changed in the western version due to, well, nobody understanding it. Other minor differences include the redesign of certain enemies to look angrier in the western versions, since it was seen as a way to better suit their culture, alongside the removal of certain cheat codes such as candy, which in the Japanese version would give you infinite health. It makes me sad to think that the only reason why this game went unnoticed was because of Mega Drive was nearing its final days, with Sega's next consoles only a few months away, as I believe that this game was nearly as good as the Sonic games. Oh well, these things happen. So let me just take a minute to thank Sega and Sonic Team for publishing and producing Right Star, the game that single-handedly made me more interested in console gaming, providing me with hours of fun by also causing me to break up with my best friend while taking me away from my studies, resulting in many fails that year. Thank you, Ro Wait a second. You could skip.
scale walls, climb ladders, swing on <laughs> ladders, ladders. <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend climbing ladders. It probably won't end very well. Mm.